ಕಾತಿಗೆ ಕಸವಡನ ಕುಂದಾತಿಗೆ ಅದೋ ಜೋ 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 ಆಕಸವಡನ ಕುಂದಾತಿ The Nilgiris, ancient home of the Kurumbas, hunter-gatherers for hundreds of years. Even today, these people live deep within forested valleys, their survival intricately woven with nature. Come April, the yearly honey hunting season approaches 70 year old malli chants a primeval bee song as she waits for her grandson to return forested hills welcome visu a 24 year old kurumba as he heads back from a way journeying job in the plains to his home in the blue mountains a home he left some years ago in search of a better living but visu cannot resist the call of the bees Every year he returns to join his people to participate in the ritual of honey harvesting from the Nilgiri cliffs. Visu's uncle Rasu, a priest and master black magic practitioner, is a respected and powerful village elder in Semenarai. Visu's return to the village in the honey hunting season every year reaffirms the Kurumba bond. They haven't lost Visu to the city in the plains. He is still one of them. The music of the handmade kwalu echoes the drone of the bees. Soon the Semenarai men leave for the lower woods to collect forest vine. These they will weave into ladders from which the honey collectors hang on the cliff. The Kurumbas never fail to salute water, source of all life. A group of Kurumba honey hunters usually comprises 4 to 8 men. Here in the moist deciduous forest 1200 meters above sea level the men search for biscotti a special flexible vine For centuries this vine has been their trusted companion a part of their honey hunting paraphernalia in which they have implicit faith The vines are chosen carefully and the bark stripped off to get to the pliable resilient fiber out of which the ladder will be woven These ladders are a miracle in accuracy. The honey gatherers mark the cliffs they want to harvest and determine the number of steps they will need to reach the hives. They then weave the ladders according to this assessment. A delicious concoction of coffee and jaggery is a welcome break in a hard day.
The Kurumbas carry the heavy 50-meter ladder across several miles of steep tracks to the waiting cliff. At Padivare, a 300-foot cliff plunges beyond visibility into the thick forest below. The honey gatherers plan their strategy. Perched precariously, they locate the hives buzzing halfway down the rock face. Massive honeycombs of the deadly rock bee hang deep in the crevices of the cliff. Lethal, feared by most, just five stings of the wild Apis dorsata is enough to knock a grown man down. Only a few, mystically protected, would dare to brave the steaming army. As the honey flow season peaks, new life forms in the brood combs. Apis dorsata larvae breathe within their cells. In the pupal stage, the cells are capped with wax. After 12 days, adult bees are ready to emerge, gingerly gnawing their way through the wax crust. The whole cycle from the egg stage to adult bee is complete in 21 days. Rock bees migrate to their colonies on the cliffs in February-March every year. A rich brood reflects a thriving ecosystem. Rock bees lay eggs frequently only if there is enough pollen and nectar in the wild to feed their young. This is why they are crucial indicators of the state of the ecology that sustains them. A burst of colour and fragrance surges through the Nilgiris in May. This is peak blooming time. The bees forage in a frenzy, gathering both nectar and pollen. As they flit, the bees carefully brush pollen into little orange pouches on their hind legs called pollen baskets. Delicate blossoms of the Acacia pinnata are laden with foraging bees, their bodies dusted over with golden pollen. The fragrance also draws other smaller bees, the Apis serrana and Dammer bees. All these insects are crucial pollinators of the mountain ecology of the Nilgiris. From April to June, the rock bee colonies are saturated with golden nectar. This is honey gathering time for the Kurumbas. Having marked their hives on the cliff, the Seminari group prepare their tools. Leftover vine is fashioned into a basket for the honey. Earlier, these were lined with leaves. But plastic is a convenient lining option and the Kurumbas have absorbed it into their honey hunting tradition. Smokers are bound together with dry twigs and green leaves. The procession to the cliff top begins. Rasu the priest has been on a fast all day. The men must bow to the spirits that protect the bees. A thousand year old tradition comes alive as these men beseech the rock bees to leave their combs, asking them to return the next season to complete the cycle of pollen, nectar and fertility. The forest gods are also invoked to bless the honey hunting and keep the Kurumbas safe. <laughs> Nakunati, get 
ಕಡು ಮರನ ತಾಯಿ ಮಾಡಿ ನ ಕಡು ಕಲನ ತಂದೆ ಮಾಡಿ At the top, the ladder is secured to a tree. The person manning the suspended rope is traditionally the honey collector's brother-in-law. The logic is that he will take extra care of the hanging collector's safety as a mishap could leave his sister a widow. You fall only when your time has come. This is the belief of the Kurumbas. This is what makes them walk without fear on the edge of sheer precipices that sometimes plunge deeper than 300 feet. At a signal from the top, the main smoke is started below the hives. Smothered, maddened by the smoke, clouds of bees shoot off the combs cliffs are earmarked by different groups as their honey rock these territories are sacrosanct no honey hunter ever trespasses another's cliff rangasami the main honey collector lowers a smoldering smoker to the combs frenzied bees erupt into the air exposing the comb The honey hunting season leaves the Kurumba obsessed. People of unparalleled agility, for them climbing sheer cliffs and hanging in open spaces is a routine matter. An inborn instinct that flows in the blood. Protected only by a column of smoke, hands and feet bare, face uncovered, the honey collector descends into the raging bee storm. of angry bees engulf him but rangaswami remains unperturbed for him this is business as usual swinging in open space rangaswami brushes the comb with a wooden spear Traditionally nothing metallic is ever used while harvesting on the cliffs. The upper portion of the hive attached to the cliff is the honey storage area. The lower crescent is the brood comb. Hanging precariously nearly 3 meters away from the comb, there is no way Rangasami can get to the honey without detaching the brood comb. What protects the swinging kurumba from these incensed bees is a mystery. Is it magic? Is it faith? Or is it a timeless affinity? A primeval symbiosis that lives on through every kurumba generation. After the brood crescent falls away, golden honey streams forth. Rangasami jabs off thick slabs of the honeycomb, skillfully maneuvering the suspended basket and his spear. Through the season, Swarnavali and several other cliffs were harvested. Earlier, when the forests were undisturbed, Every comb yielded about 20 liters of honey. Today, this has dropped to an average of 7 to 9 liters. Conservation is a Kurumba tradition. They have been a part of the honey cycle 
for ages. On every cliff they harvest, they leave some colonies intact. Cliffs like the Kalahati and Pichikeni are worshipped as sacred honey rocks. The colonies here are left untouched by all honey hunters, a traditional system of preserving gene pools. Pichikeni is revered for the spirit of a legendary woman honey hunter, challenged to harvest a treacherous cliff by her male rivals, she was betrayed by them. Consumed by jealousy, they severed the ladder as she was climbing up and she plunged to her death. Even today, the Kurumbas atone for this treason by worshipping this cliff. Raju from Kumbe is a master honey hunter, famed for his skills throughout the hunting range. But of his five sons, only two are learning his craft. At Malayur, Raju scales down a hanging rope to check the combs. He is going to allow his younger brother to harvest this cliff. The Malayur cliff is not very high. A sturdy bamboo tied to a vine hangs level with the combs. His scouting done, Raju glides back up the rock face. Unsure of his movements, the trainee fumbles. Inexperienced with the balancing act, he misjudges the placing of the basket. The honey spills out. Finally, Raju returns to wrap up the job. There is nothing to protect him as he hangs easy, one with a swinging vine. The cliffs harvested, the Kumbe men roam leech-ridden jungles looking for combs on trees. Sensing heat, rapacious leeches reach for their prey. Deep in the forest, there are still a few massive trees, surviving sentinels of the original wilderness. Raju and his men spot their quarry nestled in a Syzygium or Jamun tree. Within seconds, Raju is at the top. Ranga follows, climbing the vertical tree trunk with easy grace. Thick chunks of the comb, drenched with honey, are sliced off. The other men wait in relays along the tree trunk, eager to pass the honey down to the safety of the ground. Made out of the nectar of the jamun flower, this bitter honey is medicinal and special to the kurumbas. The kumbe men stop a while.